To review, we have just learned that many of the hijackers had ties to U.S. military installations, the FBI, and the CIA, that both Israel and Pakistan have classified roles in 9-11 to this day, and the man who co-chaired the initial investigation into 9-11 stated this information would be classified for at least 20 to 30 years. Virtually none of this information was in the 9-11 Commission report. Instead, you are expected to believe that Osama bin Laden carried out the attacks alone. Yet two wars and seven years later, he's still on the loose. The bipartisan commission was full of insiders who whitewashed the events of that day to the point it was comical. Five years after the horrors of 9-11, there's a new way to look at those unforgettable images. Through color, caricature, and captions, comic book veterans Ernie Cologne and Sid Jacobson have brought to life the 9-11 Commission Report. It took a year and a half to distill 600 pages down to less than 150. When you hear about the idea of the 9-11 Commission Report as essentially a comic book, your first reaction is, what are you, crazy? It's accurate. I mean, the graphic version is accurate. That's what happened. Thomas Keene was the co-chair of the Commission with Lee Hamilton. They would write a book together called Without Precedent. In it, he would claim that NORAD and the Pentagon did not tell the truth and that indictments were considered. If the report itself wasn't accurate, how could the comic book be? Thomas Keene is now traveling the country in order to instruct teachers on how to teach 9-11 to their young, impressionable minds. The 9-11 Commission was such a cover-up that Max Cleland, an appointed member, went off on Wolf Blitzer. A deal announced yesterday between the White House and the Commission investigating the September 11th attacks is proving to be rather controversial. Under the agreement, only certain members of the Commission will be allowed to review classified documents from the White House and their notes will be subject to administration review. Today, some relatives of people who were killed in the attacks criticized the agreement and our next guest, who's a member of the commission, claimed the deal is disgusting. Former Georgia Senator Max Cleland, a Democrat, joins me here. Well, you've used the word deal three times. I don't think the 9-11 Commission ought to be making deals with our own government under the responsibility we have from the Congress and our responsibility to the American people the White to House get all the facts, to get all the facts about all the commissioners. Look at those facts. Now, we've had to subpoena the FAA for those documents. We've had to subpoena NORAD for those documents. I'm in favor of subpoenaing the White House for the documents we need so that all the commissioners can get to see all the documents that we need. That's the only way we can face the American people and the families and say we have done a thorough investigation independently of the White House and the entire executive branch. The president has said only a minority of the commission can see a minority of the documents and then they have to clear what they're going to say to the rest of the commission with the White House. If you're one of those four that gets to see these documents, would that change your opinion? No. They don't want any more eyeballs to see their documents than they can possibly get away with. It's a scam. It's absolutely disgusting. Cleland would later resign. Well, uh, they have, have something to cover up. And the 9-11 Commission, of course, was a master cover-up. We know that. The question is what it was covering up. I don't believe the reports on September 11th uh, put out by the 9-11 Commission or by Congress. I've seen one put out by the 9-11 Commission and it was basically hundreds of pages of nothing. It was very generic, it was very uh, indirect, indistinct, devoid of facts, devoid of, of hard positions. It was things like mistakes were made. Uh, we need to improve human intelligence. I, this is nothing. I mean, it, it's like Yes, I stand for truth, justice, and the American way. But it, it was vapid. It was a waste of time and money, but gives the impression that, oh, yes, the government is doing something. The government is studying the issue. Well, what makes, makes me really disappointed, and that's an understatement, is that Congress's role is oversight. And Congress, even today, you'll see members of Congress saying, well, we haven't implemented everything that the 911 Commission recommended. And the 911 Commissioners have said that 
the administration, obstructed them, lied to them. The uh, staff statements were described by various commissioners to be an indictment of the FBI in particular, but also an indictment of the CIA. I don't think the chairman and I have ever characterized the staff statements as an indictment. It's possible others have done that. Uh, we have not. And uh, Tom and I have heard uh, repeated uh, praises from people in your business, in the media business, uh, thanking us for the quality of those statements. Uh, I would, I would second that, and by the way, I, I, I never, ever would correct the vice chairman, but I'm afraid, I'm afraid I did characterize one of those statements as an indictment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how can you start with a document that you know is false and and take that to the American people as a document by which Congress's uh, accomplishments should be measured. Dennis Kucinich would present 35 articles of impeachment against the Bush administration in June of 2008. He would stand before the House for almost three hours before reading the last few articles which were regarding 9-11. He alleged that the administration had not acted on specific warnings prior to 9-11, that they had attempted to cover this information up, and they had tried to stop any commission from being organized in regards to investigating the attack. Article 33. Repeatedly ignored and failed to respond to high-level intelligence warnings of planned terrorist attacks in the United States prior to 9-11. In his conduct while President of the United States, George W. Bush, in violation of his constitutional oath to faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and to the best of his ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States and in violation of his constitutional duty under Article 2, Section 3 of the Constitution to take care that the laws be faithfully executed has both personally and acting through his agents and subordinates together with the Vice President failed in his constitutional duties to take proper steps to protect the nation prior to September 11th, 2001. So the congressional report was redacted, and the 9-11 Commission is a cover-up. Yet our supposed leaders continue to propagate fear of the boogeyman and his disciples. I do believe that Al-Qaeda has now made it part of their global effort to destroy everything we stand for and we believe in. I'm running for President of the United States because I believe the greatest challenge of the 21st century is that of radical Islamic extremism. I believe it's there. I believe it's all over the world. I believe it's a, a, a fight, a struggle between good and evil, everything we value and believe in versus everything that is evil that wants to destroy everything America stands for and leads. And I believe It was an Osama bin Laden job with 19 people from Saudi Arabia. <laughs>